China loves socialism with Chinese characteristics. But socialism with Venezuelan characteristics? Not so much. Trouble brews for China as Venezuela crumbles. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest China news and click the notification bell so you get an alert when we publish a new episode. Venezuela, the socialist paradise where for the low, low price of just 15 million bolivars, you can buy a chicken. Yes, that's right. Venezuela's socialist economy has not worked out all that well. The economy crumbled and according to the IMF, inflation hit a million percent. The currency is so devalued, some shopkeepers weigh the money rather than waste time counting. Tomatoes for five million, anyone? Or just three million for a roll of toilet paper? Needless to say, that doesn't make a country very stable. And just last week, this happened. As hundreds of thousands of protesters, fed up with the government of Nicolas Maduro, flooded the streets of Caracas Wednesday, Venezuela's opposition leader, Juan Guaido, declared himself the country's interim president. I am so jealous. I've often tried to declare myself president, and yet it never stuck. The Trump administration was quick to support this new interim president. Nicolas Maduro is a dictator with no legitimate claim to power. The National Assembly is the duly elected representative of the people and through their constitutional system, and now the interim president, uh, Juan Guaido, uh, it represents the will of the people. Needless to say, that didn't go over very well with Maduro's people. Because Mr. Pence doesn't have a job, now he wants to come and run Venezuela. I will say it like the Venezuelan people would say it to you. Yankee, go home. Yankee, go home. Go home? Mike Pence is home. He lives in Washington, D.C. Anyway, Maduro himself officially broke ties with the U.S. I have decided to break diplomatic and political relations with the imperialist government of the United States. I mean, that's a little ridiculous. It's not like the U.S. would ever be involved in a coup in Latin America. <laughs> anyway, Maduro is finding his government increasingly isolated. Nearly every other Latin American country has sided with the new interim president. But you know who still has Maduro's back? China. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said, China supports efforts made by the Venezuelan government to protect the country's sovereignty, independence, and stability. I want to emphasize that outside sanctions or interference usually make the situation more complicated and are not helpful to resolving the actual problems. And China should know, because China's outside interference is part of the reason Venezuela is in this mess. And it goes beyond the moral support China gives other socialist nations and dictatorships to counter the democratic West. First of all, you might be wondering, since the protests in Venezuela have been, well, pretty hot, how has Maduro managed to stay in power this long? Well, it's partly thanks to around $350 million of weapons from China and Russia. And China has consistently pumped money into Maduro's government. At the end of last year, Maduro even made a state visit to China and somehow convinced Xi Jinping to wear a beauty queen sash. And she doesn't do that for just any socialist dictator. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang reportedly promised that China was willing to provide whatever help it can offer. I bet Maduro really hopes that offer is still on the table. So why would China continue to support a guy who's probably on his way down? Well, China has invested heavily in Venezuela. Venezuela was a key part of the Belt and Road Initiative. That's the Chinese regime's trade and infrastructure investment strategy whereby they give a developing country infrastructure loans they maybe can't pay back. And when they don't pay them back, China takes over the infrastructure. It's worked great around the world, like in Sri Lanka, and Pakistan, and Djibouti. And for a while, it looked like things were going great in Venezuela as well. Over the past 10 years, China invested about $70 billion in Venezuela. That's about half of all China's lending in Latin America. But there was a catch. According to foreign policy, 
to guarantee repayment. Beijing insisted on being repaid in oil. Like how I used to collect all my debts in pogs. Which was a mistake. Just like oil. Because oil prices tanked in 2014, and that caused a huge problem, compounded by the fact that the socialist government relied too much on redistribution of state oil profits instead of encouraging the people to build a robust economy in other sectors. Oil made up about half of Venezuela's GDP. So when prices collapsed, not only did the country go broke, but the amount of oil they had to give to China skyrocketed. And they began falling behind on their payments. Of course, China has a plan for that. When other countries fail to pay back their loans to China, China just takes over a port or builds a military base or something. And it looked like there was a similar plan in Venezuela. Venezuela has the world's largest oil reserves. Last year, Venezuela sold about 10% of shares in a joint oil venture to a Chinese state-owned enterprise. Combined with the shares already owned by China National Petroleum Corporation, that meant China owned 49% of the oil venture. But now, it's turning out that the brilliant plan of destabilizing a country with unpayable debts might not be a good long-term strategy. Nearly every Latin American country and Canada is siding with Trump's support of the new opposition leader, Juan Guaido. And what happens if Guaido does replace Maduro? Would he then rethink some of those Chinese loans? That's what happened in Malaysia when the longtime prime minister was ousted. But besides potentially losing all that investment money in oil, there's another big loss China would have to swallow, a loss of influence. At the turn of the 21st century, China had very little presence in Latin America, but Venezuela helped with that. Now, China's trade with Latin America is 22 times what it was back in 2000. And a lot of Latin countries that used to have diplomatic relations with Taiwan now have switched to the People's Republic of China. Of course, a change in leadership in Venezuela doesn't guarantee that they would cool ties with China, but that's a risk. And if Venezuela has a new leader, and the Chinese regime loses its foothold there, lots of things could change. And that's why it's basically only friendly dictatorships like China, Russia, Syria, and Turkey that are saying Maduro should stick around. I mean, obviously Turkey is on the list. After all, Maduro dined at the restaurant of Turkish heartthrob chef Salt Bay. Soft power has nothing on red meat power especially when you're the president of a starving country. One that's basically turned into a real-life version of the purge. So what do you think China will do if Maduro is ousted? And if you want to know how the situation in Venezuela relates to America, head over to our sister channel, America Uncovered. The link to that episode is below. And before we go, now is the time when I answer questions from you, my loyal 50 Cent Army, fans who support the show on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jackie Young asks, do you think the CCP will try to attack you or your crew if they found you a danger to their national stability? A lovely thought. Well, I don't know to what extent the CCP is monitoring me or the show. I mean, I'm still waiting to be directly criticized by my favorite state-run media, the Global Times. But no matter how much of a thorn in their side China Uncensored is, there's a limit to what the Communist Party would be willing to do to an American in America. However, if I decided for some insane reason that I wanted to go to mainland China, things might be different. Maybe Chinese police would discover I was actually trying to, I don't know, plan on smuggling 500 pounds of drugs, and then I'd wind up like this Canadian. So I think I'll keep making the show right here in New York City. Thanks for your question, Jackie. If you'd like to hear your question answered on the show, sign up to support China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. It's basically the price of your daily cup of coffee. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. That was a great episode, Chris. Thanks. You did another episode about this topic, right? I sure did. 
Click here to head over to America Uncovered to see a different perspective on Venezuela.